Coming up next on Jersey Matters, it's now illegal to sell cigarettes to anyone in the state under 21. We'll talk with the mayor that started it all. And now you can buy stun guns in New Jersey. We'll talk to a gun advocate about what that means for you. Also, it's never too late to try. You'll meet the 93-year-old new mayor of Titton Falls. And in a moment, we're going to talk to Patrick Murray, the head of the Polling Institute at Monmouth University about the meaning of this last election for the country and New Jersey. But first, a few words. It took a while, but suddenly, smoking cigarettes is bad and smoking pot is good. We've come a long way since the Marlboro Man and Reefer Madness. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. Sooner than you think, within a few months, Pot will be legal in New Jersey. Why? Money, plain and simple. The numbers are staggering. Since the legalization of pot in 2014, Colorado has brought in over $500 million in tax revenue. Last year alone, Washington State brought in $256 million in tax revenue. And neither of those states matches the population of New Jersey. Much like state lotteries and casinos, once a few states legalize pot, the others fall like dominoes. Watch once New Jersey legalizes marijuana early next year, New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware will quickly do the same. It's a competitive thing. They don't want to watch their tax dollars go to New Jersey. Fortunately, all of the states that legalize pot now get to learn from the mistakes of Colorado. And their biggest mistake was to allow edible pot, which is much more potent than smoking marijuana, to be put in candy and wrapped in candy wrappers, making it alluring to children. Advocates for marijuana in New Jersey are already pushing for candy marijuana. Look, legalized pot is coming for adults. But our new governor needs to be smart and leave the candy for the kids. And now, our interview with Patrick Murray, the head of the Polling Institute at Monmouth University. So what did the election we just have mean for the state of New Jersey and mean for the nation? No better man to speak to about that than Patrick Murray, who is the director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, it's my pleasure. I know you've been busy. Let's start with New Jersey. Everybody's trying to discern whether it was a Trump factor or a Christie factor. What was it? It was a bit of both. There was no question about it. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, most voters who went into vote uh, told us the week before the election that they really weren't paying attention to where either one of the two candidates stood on the issues. They didn't know whether Phil Murphy or Kim Godano's views were in line or out of step with the state, nor did they care. They had decided a year ago that they knew who they were going to vote for, regardless of who the nominee was. And, I, but, and that was because of Chris Christie. It was time to turn a, turn a leaf on the state. We weren't happy with the direction the state was going, wanted a change uh, away from Chris Christie. Donald Trump, though, was kind of the uh, last nail in the coffin for any Republican's chances. That's why Kim Godano, who ran a campaign on property taxes, which was the number one issue by far that voters said that they wanted to hear a gubernatorial candidate talk about. And when we asked these voters, so do any of these candidates have a property tax plan? 85% said, no, we haven't heard of property tax plan. Because they weren't listening. They weren't listening. Yeah, so they just didn't care. And so it was going to be extremely difficult for any Republican to break through. Because the Republican, because the voters just weren't listening. So, so that's got to be disheartening for Phil Murphy, and it's got to be a little bit heartening yeah. for Kim Godano. It really didn't matter who was yeah. in the slot, whose name was next to the right. D and the R. Right, and Phil Murphy's going to get a wake-up call when he gets into Trenton in January because he skated through a primary and he skated through a general election where the voters were not paying attention to what he was proposing. Suddenly, in January, voters are going to start turning attention. We've seen this before. We've seen Democrats come into office with big majorities. Uh, John Corzine won by 10. Uh, I think uh, jo Jim Florio won by something close to 20 points or something when he ran, and thinking that they had a mandate and not paying attention to the middle-class taxpayer in New Jersey and suddenly getting thrown out of office four years later. So Phil Murphy needs to understand <laughs> that whatever he was wants to do as a liberal progressive, and that's the agenda that he's put forward, 
if he forgets about the middle class property tax payer in New Jersey, he's going to be a one term governor. So you're saying there's this Phil Murphy hangover where people are going to come to and go, wait a second, a $1.3 billion tax increase? Where, yeah. where did that come yeah. from? I mean, so far, the things that have been proposed, which include a millionaire's tax and uh, legalization of marijuana, both of which are going to happen. Uh, to raise revenues, and that's fine. And then, but people are going to say, "Okay, you're raising all these revenues. I don't see uh, you're spending more money, but I don't see my property taxes going down." That's you know, yeah, Phil Murphy's got to pay attention to, to go that. To the pension fund. But yeah. let, let's move on and talk about the midterm elections, how this affects next year's election, and start mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Do you see? I know it's way out, I, I, yeah. and I'm putting a lot of pressure on you. But with the trend, uh, do you see things? Uh, this election affecting next year's election? Well, I, I tell people when we, we look at these races, New Jersey, Virginia had a governor's race too. Every year, every time we have that cycle, national media and pundits look and say, oh, well, this is a referendum. How is this a referendum on the president who was just elected the year before? And I always talk them down and say, it's always about local issues. It's not about this. This year is the first time that I saw an exception to that rule, where really? Donald Trump really played in these races. Because it wasn't just in the governor's races. We saw it in legislative races in Virginia. The Democrats picked up at least 15 seats. Here in New Jersey, they only picked up a net of three seats. But if you understand the map in New Jersey, that was three more than they are entitled to by the map. I mean, they went beyond what, what the legislative map does. They also picked up local races at the county level, at the council level. And that's the key, key isn't it? It affected yes. races that it shouldn't affect. Right. There are places where nobody was paying attention to that, that was, these are Republican strongholds uh, that Democrats just suddenly out of the blue with candidates that nobody heard of were doing either won or came within a hair's breadth of winning. And that has real implications for uh, 2018. As it stands right now, and, I, and again, I have to add the caveat, a lot of things can happen oh, yeah, over a year. I that a year is a long time. time. But as things stand right now, you see Republicans losing a couple of seats in New Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, there's already one seat that I, I can guarantee that they lost. Frank Lobiondo in the southern part of the district um, ha has won that district handily. He's retiring. Um, he's been there for over 20 years. Uh, there's no question that uh, the Democrats have already coalesced around a candidate, and I would put money right now down that 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 candidate, who's Jeff Andrew, who's a state legislator, is going to win that congressional seat next year. So I already am counting one, Repub one Democratic pickup. Your, your guarantees are pretty good because <laughs> you guaranteed pretty early on. I know you started to back off a little bit because you just didn't want to be that guy, but you said very early on, Phil Murphy's your next governor. Yeah. This is long before the primaries. Right. This is even before the primary happened. As, yeah. as soon as Steve Fulop and Steve Sweeney dropped out of the primary, I knew that the governor was going to be Phil Murphy. Sat here and, and, and said that to you. There was no question about it. Obviously, there was no doubt after the election results. Do you see the Democrats now definitely picking up the House? Uh, definitely, I'm not sure because there's, as we said, there's certain things that can play out. But I, I think they do because I'm looking at a, there's enough districts that are competitive already, and I think there are other districts that people didn't think would be competitive. So I'll give you an example: the third district in New Jersey, which uh, people thought people have been thinking uh, Tom MacArthur, the Republican incumbent there, is pr pretty much a shoe in. But I saw some interesting voting patterns coming out of both Burlington County here in New Jersey this year and also in Virginia Beach uh, this year where there's a lot of, and Prince William County where there's a huge military presence and his district has a big base uh, there. And they are starting to swing. Military voters are swinging over Democrat That's this fascinating. year. So I would say that he's not a sure bet either. So. And he's closely tied to Donald Trump. And he closely I, he, tied. He had a the fundraiser for Donald Trump. He defended Donald Trump. He tried to resurrect the health care bill. Stood next to him, right next to him doing yeah. that. Uh, so there's a lot of fodder. If they get a good candidate in the third district, although that's not a guarantee yet. And this is the key. Uh, Republicans, uh, Democrats have lost some races. They had some special House elections this year. They lost races because they didn't field good candidates because they didn't think they were going to have a chance. They need to field good candidates as well. One last question, because the, the bigger hill to climb is the Senate. Do you see them winning the Senate? That's a little harder to predict because they, they're defending, there's, I forget, 33 or 34 Senate seats up. Right, there's the many vast, more Democratic The vast system. majority of them yeah. are Democratic right. uh, defenses. And Democratic, and a number of them are defend, Democratic held seats in red states. So it's going to be a little bit more But it more seems difficult. like more of a possibility now. But it's closer. Yeah, it's closer to a possibility. There's no question.
Wonderful. Thank All you right. for coming in. Much Appreciate it. Line. Patrick Murray, director of the Monmouth University Polling Institute. When Jersey Matters continues. When we come back, let's continue talking politics. Phil Murphy gives his first speech since election night, and Jersey Matters was there.